gosh, yes, I have service. I'm so excited. I was not, okay, I don't know how service is up here on top of a mountain. Well, I'm not on top of a mountain. I'm like on a mountain. Um, so if this live cuts out at any point, that is because the, the 5G has abandoned me. Um, so my apologies, but I'm here now. I am, huh, I'm here, I'm here now. It's gorgeous, it's the golden hour. I am very embarrassed at the possible, at the possibility that like a hiker is gonna walk by and see me doing this. Like more embarrassed than the fact that I'm actually doing this live on Instagram. I'm embarrassed that someone's gonna see me doing this live on Instagram, so. Let's cross your fingers for me that uh, nobody walks through my dowsing tutorial. <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Hello, Alta D Mins. My name is Isabel. I am the teen librarian. And today I am, this is the, today I am whew, out, not in the library, as you can tell. Um, today is the second installment in our Ghost Hunters series where I am walking you through in a live tutorial how to use different uh, ghost hunting apparati, apparatuses, um, and showing you how to do it and seeing if we get any cool results, maybe while we're, while we're live. That would be amazing if this live series actually captured um, like a real, a real moment. <gasps> Anyway, <laughs> fingers crossed, we can help. Um, so today I am out at the Cobb Estate in Altadena, and today we are gonna talk dousing rods. Um, so a little bit about dowsing rods. Dowsing is a very, it was a bird. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of distractions. There are like a million flies and ants and like people talking and there's a lady who's walking towards me um, But I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna commit to it so Dowsing let's talk dowsing um, Dowsing is a form of divination. It's been used for many many centuries originally it was used um, as a means of finding groundwater or metals or oil or gemstones or anything under the ground, sort of like a metal detector, sort of like a very OG metal detector. <laughs> There's a puppy too. <laughs> you uh, interfering with No, you are absolutely fine. Go, uh, you were totally good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I made some friends. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, dowsing is originally a form of divination used for finding, like I said, groundwater, uh, oils, metals, uh, things underground, sort of, like I said, metal detectors, or very early metal detectors. Also became a tool used for finding um, uh, spirits or thing, uh, grave sites originally also was a, a use of it. Dowsing rods um, can be dated back in texts, or the earliest, like, textual references to dowsing come from the early to mid 1500s. I think there's something like in, uh, thank you for the compliment on my sweatshirt. Uh, we stan Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> um, so the earliest references to dowsing are from like I, the 1500s. Um, I think Martin Luther even has, uh, uh meant references dowsing. Um, and there, and it's been traced sort of throughout the Middle Ages up until even there are contemporary examples of dowsing. Um, traditionally, uh, some of like the images that I posted on the Instagram of dowsing, uh, what you usually see is a Y-shaped implement. That can be, uh, it's typically like a branch or a tree branch or some piece of wood shaped like a Y. Um, there are different traditions about what kind of wood you should use. In America, uh, commonly witch hazel uh, branches were used um, to, that was, so there are different sort of, you know, superstitions about what kind of wood is best. And the idea is that you would hold the two ends of the Y with your hands 
and that the way that you would find water for instance is if the is if the um, the branch would move or anything like that if it if there made some movement that would sort of indicate that you had found something very much like a metal detector um i'm going to be using l rods so the that's the y rod these are l rods um l rods i'm not exactly sure when these became a tool of uh dousing they're obviously more modern they come in copper which is what i have or um, you can find them in different metals. I'm not sure if there's a preference around the type of metal that you use, um, but copper seems to be pretty common. Um, and so the way that it works is you have your two rods, you hold them in your hands, and then you have, and the sort of most basic way of using them is that the rods, so they have these sort of little grips on them. So you grip this, but it allows the rod itself to pivot back and forth. So at the, at the most basic way of using it is that if the rods cross, that means that you've found something. Or if you're using this to try to contact presences in the beyond, like a cross would maybe be yes, or some sort of identification like that. Um, a lot of scientific studies have been done on dousing, surprisingly. Um, Many have debunked it as a genuine way of finding water or metal or spirits or graves. Um, sort of the common idea is that it's really a mixture of luck and chance, and also what we talked about in the Ouija video, which is idiomotor effect. So your hands or your body is unconsciously making motions that guide the, that guide the device you're using. Um, that being said, I did my research and I found a couple cool examples of dousing, more modern dousing. Um, just fascinating to realize that like, it's not just like dudes in the middle ages doing dousing. There are like famous dousers throughout history. <laughs> um, in, during the Vietnam War, I think there was a reference to Marines, US Marines using dousing to find like underground tunnels or the passageways, that kind of thing. Um, I also saw a citation about, I think it was in the 80s, there was an avalanche in Norway and the Norwegian army supposedly used, used dousing to find like anyone who was trapped in the avalanche. I don't know if that worked, but dousing continues to sort of uh, fill our minds and sort of uh, foster our imagination, even though scientists would say it doesn't really work. But we're gonna try anyway. So that's my dousing background. Now a little bit about where I am. I am in beautiful Golden Hour, Altadena. I am here at the Cobb Estate, which you may or may not have heard of. I had not heard of this until a couple weeks ago when my coworkers were like, oh, you should go do dousing at the Cobb Estate. And I was like, we'll come again. Um, so this is a sort of trailhead that comes off the end of Lake Avenue and Loma Alta. So you like drive to the end of Lake and it turns into Loma Alta and there's a big stone gate right there. And that's the original entrance to the Cobb Estate. So I think his name was Charles Cobb. Did not write that down in my notes. <laughs> he was a lumber magnate and he built his estate here in 1918. So that's what all of this original land, this land, well, originally this land, uh, white people did not live here. Um, but Charles Cobb is the, the first one who built a house, I guess, on this land, a modern house on this land. Um, so he built his estate in 1918. And apparently at the time, the woods around here were sort of already known as like haunted woods. I couldn't find any reference as to like why they're called haunted woods, but they were, even when Charles Cobb moved in here. Um, he died in 1939 and he left his house to the Freemasons. And then they saw, it, I think it passed hands maybe one more time before it was actually bought by the Marx Brothers. Very fun fact. <laughs> um, a little Hollywood up in Altadena. Uh, I, it wasn't clear if the Marx Brothers ever actually lived in the house. I think it was pretty derelict at that time. They bought the house in 56. 
they demolished the house in 59 and then this land was put up for a public auction in 1971. I know I'm giving you a lot of history but I think it's kind of fascinating and just you know learn about your amazing beautiful Altadena. Um, so it was put up for auction in 71 and it was there was originally a plan to make this a cemetery. Altadenans were like please no thank you we do not need a cemetery in this haunted woods this is Marx Brothers Haunted Woods and students at John Muir High School like started a fundraising campaign to buy the land and keep it public so shout out to the freaking John Muir students um Broncos correct <laughs> um, uh, for saving this land and turning it into like a beautiful sort of little park hiking trail. I mean, there's a lot of graffiti here. It's still beautiful. Um, I read one thing about how like when you start at the trail and you get closer to where I am at now, which is the foundations of the original house, um, the floor, like the, the fauna, so all the plants become more diverse than what would naturally be found in this part of California. And that's because those are the plants that like Charles Cobb supposedly planted when he bought this land. Um, so that's like a little fun fact. Um, so here we are, we're at the Cobb Estate. Supposedly haunted, haunted woods, we don't know. Mars Brothers, they were here. We are gonna try to do a little dowsing. Um, I don't really have, I'm not gonna try to look for water because that would mean I'd have to sort of like move around here and my phone is propped up against my purse and there are ants crawling on it right now. Um, so I'm just going to sort of see if I can, it's a little windy too, so that might affect the woo-woos here. Um, but I'm just going to sort of see if I can ask about like presences, if there's anything here, if there's any entity or anything like that. That's not an entity, those are hikers. I am still very embarrassed that someone's going to walk by. Someone already did walk by and I was fine. I'm fine. It's cool. Okay. So... <laughs> Um, all right, so as we said, these are also going to be available to check out from the Library of Things at Altadena eventually. Um, so the purpose of this video is also to give you a little tutorial on how you use them. I am not an expert though, I've just watched a lot of YouTube videos. Um, so the idea is you wanna hold your rods with your sort of, your thumbs can rest on the sort of little handle here like that but you don't want to hold your thumb up on this obviously because then you're controlling the way that the rod moves um, so you want to just sort of hold it very gently and you want to find sort of an equilibrium so where they just sort of rest gently without swaying so I'm gonna to try to frame this so you can kind of see it set against the beautiful sky here <laughs> um, uh, all right so okay I'm just gonna like crunch some leaves. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, just relaxing, have my thumbs on it. I'm just gonna sort of position them until I get like a nice still moment. Okay, all right. Is there anyone or anything that still lives on this land. Oh, okay, I think that was me. <laughs> They're very sensitive. It's hard not to, okay. That wasn't me. That was not me. I swear to God, I was not. I mean, maybe it was the wind or maybe it was just something, but I wasn't trying to move at all. Okay, so that's a cross, so maybe a yes. Um, how, what should I say next? Okay, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring them back to an equilibrium, to a neutral. I don't know what that was. I think I maybe flinched. I don't know. Oh my God, freak, people are coming. <laughs> okay, I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> Um, they're just gonna see a weirdo in a cat sweatshirt out here dousing, like, oh my gosh, I, this is, just, no, I have nothing but humility for you, Altadena. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, and more people are coming from the other direction. Ay, ay, ay. This is great. This is just my luck. 
Um, guys, anyone who's here, what should I ask next? Comment. Send me a comment. What should I do next? Okay, so we maybe got a little cross there. Um, where they said, yes, someone is here. What else should we do? Um, okay, they're going a different way. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, let's find an equilibrium again. Birds. Okay. Is Charles Cobb still here? I didn't move it at all. I don't just have heebie-jeebies because there are ants on me. <laughs> okay, ask if it likes the hikers. Yeah, that's a great one. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. No ants on me. Okay. Okay, ooh, there's a little bit of wind. I'm gonna maybe wait till the wind dies down. These things are insanely sensitive um, for two little pieces of copper wire. Okay. Um, do you like other people? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold on. Let me, before I start. Okay. Do you like other people on your land? <gasps> I'm back. I'm back. Are you there? Can you see me? Okay. I lost the connection for a minute. We're live again? Yes. Wow, look at this light. Amazing. Beautiful. California. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, so I think it paused literally whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, right at the moment where they, they freaking crossed. I wasn't doing it. I was standing so still. I was standing so still and they crossed. It was so weird. Okay. I got some more comments though. Oh, are you stuck between realms? Are you at peace? Okay, so it crossed when I said, do you, I said, do you like having other people on your land? And it said, yes, that's a good thing. Yay, we're not intruding on anyone. We're being respectful. All right, um, you better go to a crowded place. All right, let me try. Okay, let me try one more. All right, um, okay. Are, okay, I'm gonna do that. Are you a piece? Okay, here we go. Are you a piece? They crossed again. Ah, okay, I don't know. They keep crossing. Like I've done this before, and sometimes they go this way, sometimes they go wee woo woo woo, but they keep crossing. I don't know if that's me. I don't know if that's Mr. Cobb. I don't know if that's someone else who's here. Ah, this has been really nice, actually. It's like a gorgeous setting. Um, and I'm just like talking to spirits right now. This is so much fun. I like passing rocks. Okay, what if I said, um, oh, is there buried treasure? Buried treasure. Treasure. Okay, let me see. All right, I'm gonna get an equilibrium. And my phone is on low battery, of course. It always is whenever I go to do these videos. <laughs> um, so let me see. Okay. Is there buried treasure here? Looks like maybe not. There's a fly on me. Okay, it didn't move. All right. No buried treasure, I guess. All right. Well, I think you get the idea. These are really fun. It's really, it's like <laughs> very much a test of patience to like sit completely still, not try to move them. I think that like as far as ghost hunting sort of equipment goes, I think I like this a little bit more than the Ouija. The Ouija just feels, maybe it's like pop culture, the Ouija movies, me being a little kid trying to do it in my like 
room on a slumber party but the Ouija just feels a little like weirder it just feels a little like no I don't know something's gonna come through here this feels like a little bit more kind of manageable like it's not as ominous it's just a little bit more friendly you just get kind of a yes or no it's kind of fun to see how they move they don't you not have to like expect like answers because sometimes I feel like with Ouija you want it to give you like a real word and it just gives you like P Q R A five or something and you're like what does that mean but this I like this because it's a little bit more simple and it just kind of gives you yes or no's I think these are really fun they will be available for checkout eventually at the end once we're done doing all of these tutorials through the month of October then they're gonna be added to the library of things you'll be able to check them out if you'd like to go find out who you are you know sheltering in place with uh, we've all been stuck in our houses for a very long time might be worth exploring who else is in your home who's there with you um thank you so much for joining me again i am isabel i'm the teen librarian this has been ghost hunters altadena we are at the beautiful cobb estate in altadena look at that nice sunset i really like getting out of the library it looks really fun that's my bag. That's where my phone was propped. Those are the stairs. I don't know if they're the original stairs. Don't really look like it. Um, please stay tuned. Every Thursday for the rest of October, we're going to be doing more of these tutorials. Um, so next week, we're going to be doing um, spirit boxes, I think. We're going to be doing a PS7 spirit box. Week after that, we're going to do EMF meters. Um, all of that will be available for checkout. Um, and then I have to plug another amazing event that we're having. Um, the week of Halloween on the 28th, Caitlin Dowdy, who is an LA-based mortician, author, and death activist, I guess. Um, we're going to be having her live. We're going to be doing a live Zoom interview with her. I am so excited I get to talk to her. Um, I'm going to be asking her about how she sort of found her career path as a mortician. Um, that's a pretty unique career. I don't feel like many of us know morticians. Um, so yeah, she is going to be there. I'm super excited. If you want to get the Zoom link for that, register on our website and I'll send it to you. If you have any questions for Caitlin, you can email me or DM me. Um, and I'll, if they're good questions, I'll ask her. Um, all right. Stay spooky. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Stay hydrated just be well everybody like it's a weird time we're gonna make it through you can always come by the library now because we're partially open okay and i don't want to leave